So automatically, each of us has an ego. We're doing something that none of you can do. And you get to wear a tool belt. When you're a kid 18 years old, and you've got the wrenches in like a holster, you're like a cowboy. I always knew I would be an iron worker. My brothers and my father were iron workers before me. Oh, my father. Oh. My father was very disappointed I didn't go to college. Oh. We had a college boy come into work this summer. He saw a book in my back pocket and looked amazed. He asked me, you read? That's what can get to you. The unrecognition from other people. To say a man is just a laborer, a woman just a waitress, it bothers you sometimes. Some mornings, I look across the skyline to look for a building I've worked on. See that office building over there? See that building? I helped build it. And I know some guy sitting behind his $4,000 desk, and he's not thinking about me. But yeah, I think about him sometimes. Why is it not in my pan? I'm a project manager. Every day I'm here at 7.30 a.m. and I leave at 8 p.m. In between my meetings, I answer calls and messages, and I try to avoid my boss. You see, you always have a boss. Sometimes you have an okay boss. Sometimes you have a Satan boss. He's not right behind me, is he? You know, sometimes I wish these walls were just a bit higher. I've been in a lot of cubicles in my day. I've been in the high wall cubes, I've been in the hot light cubes. <laughs> but the way things are these days, I'm lucky to be in any cubicle at all. I have friends who would kill for this job, for any job. I papered the walls of my cubicle with posters. I brought in fresh flowers, brought in my favorite ceramic lamp, the collection of things on top of my computer. I call them computer gods. I guess I have more decorations than I thought, but you know, in a cubicle, little things like glow in the dark skeletons go a long way. Sharing a cubicle is Sort of like sharing a bathroom stall. It doesn't matter how tall these eyes are or how big it is, you are still in there with somebody else. In not a sexy way. I can see the programmer in the cubicle next to me working. Sometimes I can see what she's doing. Oftentimes, she's emailing jokes to her wife. I acquired a webcam. I set it up so it points behind me, and if anybody walks past it, I can see them. I grew up expecting I would get out of college with, with a million dollars. I grew up expecting a Mercedes was going to get delivered to my front door. It was quite a rude awakening. It's the first time in four generations I have it worse than my parents. Jobs are not big enough for people. When you ask someone who they are, they define themselves by their jobs. I'm a doctor. I'm a carpenter. I'm a sportscaster. If you ask me, I say, my name is Amanda McKenney. At certain points in time, I do things for a living. I have a totally different mentality than those 20 years older than me, the lifers. I have no real sense of loyalty because I understand that they've got a business to run and they'll lay me off and it's fruit. I accept that. I don't think that anyone my age thinks I've got a job for life. No, what we really think is, all right, I'm gonna get as much as I can from this job and then I'm gonna move on and get some more somewhere else. This is the first job of many. Thank you. 
This is my first job. I smell like a burger. This register is easy. Hey! Do you want a burger? I hit the picture of the the burger. Everything's the same old thing. Hello, chicken nugget, quarter pounder. And I wait for this phone to ring, that phone to ring. The phone at the end of the counter. When I see the manager writing down an order. When I see the manager making exchange. When I see the manager writing an address, I whisper yes. having a team of people work for me. In our world of money, money management is still the sexiest job there is. Ask any girl at the East Bank Club, money is hot. True story, they did a study that shows that just by looking at a Maserati made girls produce twice as many hormones as normal. <laughs> oh yeah, if someone wants to call me a shallow douchebag, 
A corporate tool? A freaking robber baron? I take it as a compliment. Abs are goddamn lonely! That's what this country's about. The free market. It's not perfect, but if you leave it alone, it'll correct itself better than any regulator can. Yeah, some companies will go away. Some people will lose their jobs. And some people will lose money. But that's just basic capitalism. Who developed America? I said the regulators. The SEC. Or was it the Mellons? The Rockefellers? I mean, okay. Tell me what they did bad. Sure, Rockefeller exploited some workers in the copper field. <laughs> Maybe he shot some of them. Where do you still? <laughs> Okay, fine, not perfect, but who benefited? There's still Standard Oil, isn't there? Mellon's Bank is still around. <laughs> I mean, how many charities were started by these people? How many museums, theaters, national parks are here for all of us to enjoy thanks to these robber parents? These are the giants and builders that who built our country, so unless you have losers, <laughs> you cannot have Look, I'm gonna have to cut this short. I gotta get back on the phone before the markets close overseas. Everybody works long hours these days. Kid wants to make it, he's gotta be willing to work long hours. And he's gotta know how to outsmart the regulators to make a profit. It's easy, Christ. If you can't outsmart one little government staff, you should come to work in morning. You know, I always wanted to teach when I get tired of all of this. You know, get with the young people, share my experience, my knowledge, my values. dislike for a certain child, but you force yourself to say, good morning, Manuel, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like somebody took too many Flintstone gummies. My name is Rose Hoffman. I teach third grade. At 9.15, we start with math. I have tables fun written on the board. You don't say tables. You say table's fun, because everything has to be fun, fun, fun. I tell my students. <laughs> Mrs. Hoffman's here, everybody works. In the old days, I had 18 to 20 students who stayed in my classroom from the beginning of the bell to the very end. Today, I have 37. The children come in, play on their phones, and they leave for computer lab and art therapy. Oh yes, I have seen great changes since I began teaching in 1967. Back then, we actually taught English, not English as a second language. I'm shocked that English is the second language. When my parents came here, they didn't learn tree at the first language at the taxpayer's expense. We also didn't have any problems with focus. Of course, back then, we had the paddle. Yep, I'm a big believer on corporal punishment. It builds focus. <laughs> and trust. My classroom was always a showcase. Those days we did it ourselves. With colorful pictures and charts on the wall. A snowman in winter. 
to spill collectors, she can't even count on me, her husband, to be there for her in a communion or a graduation. So I make two rounds around Scarborough, coming four blocks beside my house, and I never go home. Easier to just keep going, you know? So I hit up the white, thought I won't be coming home. Honey? Hello? I think full company. Verizon Tech Support, this is John. How may I help you? Yeah, my line ain't working and I got like five I'm... bars, man. Sorry you're having trouble, sir. May I please have the number you were calling? Hi, 647-640-3722. I'm sorry, sir. All circuits in your area are busy. What? What are you saying? I can't understand a word, man. I'm sorry, sir. Why don't you wait five minutes and place your... Again. You'd think they'd be grateful to get a live person instead of a computer. You know, for me, it's a temptation to talk to them if they sound upset. You know, sometimes you want to say, gee, what's the matter? But all you can say is, I'm sorry you're having trouble. You get caught talking to a customer. That's one mark against you. Three marks. I don't even want to say it. This one time, this lady, she called me. And she said, operator, I'm lonesome. Will you talk to me? And all I said was, I'm sorry you're having trouble. I'm a communications person, but I can't communicate. So I always thought of a receptionist as the loser at the front desk taking phone messages. Now, I'm one. So of course, I had to change my opinion. I mean, she had to be special, right? Because I'm so special. It was all fine until we had this office party. I'd be having a fairly intelligent conversation with somebody when they'd ask me what I did. When I told them I'm a receptionist, they'd make up an excuse and walk away. So now, I make up other words for what I do. Communication controls, entry management. I'm tired at the end of the it's day. It's strange, but you get tired, tired of talking. There, there isn't a 10 minute break, break in a day that's quiet. You, you can't, can't think. think. You know, all You're I do in the all day is say what I have to say to people, people talking to people about what I'm going to. I don't want to talk to you. People ask me to start when I'm talking. I never listen to phone conversations. Do I listen to on phone conversations? But let me tell you, some, some people, people really, really do. do. You know, I want some people online are so absurd. All the girls who they'll have you laughing. I don't care laughing. who you are. If but you're looking nice, tears, it gets face. quiet. You're going to listen to phone conversations. It makes the night go faster. Sometimes, to make the day go faster, I'll do drawings, laundry and sort of things. Never people. I pretend I'm alone and things are quiet. I call it the land of no phones. I, I never, never answer, answer the phone, phone at home. home. and I read it online. No, I don't have an office. I don't work. I work. I work. Of course I work. It's just... I don't have a job. Anyway, thanks for the offer. I'm a stay-at-home mom. In my mother's day, they would have called me a housewife. <laughs> That's funny. It's not like I sit around all day watching soap operas. I have a lot of work to do. You just want something more exciting to talk about at a dinner party. You know, you know, something that matters. But I do only 
matters to three people. All I am is just a housewife, nothing special, nothing great. What I do is kind of boring, if you'd rather, it can wait. All I am is someone's mother, all I am is someone's wife, all of which seems unimportant, all it is is just with us dogs and women. If you see a nice little honey, it kind of brightens up your day. We have a code we put into the system. We put a Q, that stands for cutie. If you see a nice little honey laying out there in their backyard, she'll be laying there on her stomach with her top strap undone. If you go over there and you scare her good enough, she'll jump right up. It gives you something to do. It adds excitement to the day. I did not want to be a housewife like my mother and my sisters. Somehow 
I just knew I wanted more out of life. I was sitting in this coffee shop when a friend came up to me and said, Hey, yo, Roberto, you can make $500 in 20 minutes. I like cat waiting. So I went up to this penthouse. The guy up there was quite well known. He wanted to use me. It was over before it even started. It was a tremendous kick. I mean, there I was, doing nothing, feeling nothing, and in 20 minutes, I was gonna walk away with $500 in my pocket. Just out of curiosity, how many of you know someone who makes $500 for 20 minutes work? I think of myself as an upper class working woman. The press call me a socialite, which is just another name for a well-dressed fundraiser. To me, fundraising is like candy. You get to talk to fascinating people and promote causes you love. What could be more delicious than that? I began in the 80s. I gave a party in Washington, D.C. for Nicaraguan refugee children. It wasn't for the terrorists, but I'm sure that would have been fun too. But fundraising is work. It is hard separating people from their money. I'll never bring up money when I first meet someone. I mean, it's not like it's a secret. They know I'm there. But sometimes, I like to see how long I can go before asking for a gift. Call me a tease. It's a marketplace transaction. Somehow, I was able to absorb that quite young. I was a precocious child. Actually, I was sort of lonely. I didn't experience myself as being attractive. I mean, I didn't look like a Calvin Klein ad. But I was bright, and I didn't play by the rules. Guys were mostly scared of me. They didn't want to get involved emotionally, but they did want to use me. And for a while, I was willing to accept that. It was feeling intimacy, feeling warm, feeling. The other day, I was riding around New York in a limousine during a hotel strike, but I thought, now I know what it's like to be a bag lady. You can't just go around and pick up every homeless person you see and bring them home with you. But if you can help by saying something entertaining, it will bring a light into their eyes. Maybe that's what the word social light means. You become your job. I become a hustler. Even when I'm not hustling, I'm a hustler. What you do is who you are. And I don't think it's so terribly different from someone who works 40 hours a week on an assembly line just to come home feeling numb, cut off. People aren't meant to switch on and off like water faucets. back at you. The hydraulic presses leak, so you're slipping on oil. 
you have the possibility of being burnt each time the hot dry dye hits the wet piece. You're constantly engulfed in a cloud of steam every 40 seconds. The tanks run 24 hours a day. I work eight straight hours with two 10 minute breaks and a 20 minute break for lunch. I find it difficult to eat my lunch in that length of time. And I was a sailor, and he blew in off the water. My father was a farmer, and I his only daughter. I took up with a no good mill working man from Massachusetts, who died from too much whiskey.
a cold can of beer, putting my feet up in front of the idiot box. When that whistle blows, a lot of guys want to sit around and talk. Me, I want to get the hell out of here. What even one stone's crooked? I notice it. The people who ain't lives here might not notice it, but I notice it. Stone's my business. Stone's my living. Stone's my life. He builds a house with his hands. Thirty years go by, it's time. A house of stone, the mason works real good. He does his work, his work day flies. Quitting time's a big surprise. It's always one more stone to get just right. It's always one more stone before. Stone cabin down on the Green River. My stone cabin is in the kitchen with a stone door that's extremely very heavy. <laughs> it seems all my dreams got a piece of rock mixed up in them. Builds a house. at the 
bar that I can offer. It would be very boring if I had to say, would you like a cocktail? Over and over, so I come out different for my own enjoyment. I say, what's exciting at the bar that I can offer, my lord? Or something. Maybe with cocktails I give a little philosophy. With coffee I give a little political science. I have an opinion on every single subject there is. My bosses don't like it, so I have to speak sort of voce. And if I get heated, I don't give a damn. I speak like an Italian speaks. I have to be a witch. How else does the world come to me? Everyone wants to eat, everyone has hunger, and I serve them. I give service. I'm not servile. There's a difference. I get intoxicated with giving service. It becomes the action. And I feel like Matahari. And it intoxicates me. I'm on stage. Let me task with a jester so gentle or 
my eldest daughter said, act your age. And I said, honey, if I was acting my age, I wouldn't be walking. Not after 16 years on this job. <laughs> I worked for them 16 years, and overnight, they let half of us go. It's now known as Black Thursday. They told us to clear out, leave. That's all. No goodbyes. This one guy broke down and cried right there. What did I do wrong? I've done a great job. Please don't do this to me. My daughter's getting married next month. How am I going to face people? All of a sudden, Nobody calls. You go out and start visiting friends. But they're all busy with their own work. They don't have time for you. This is a psychological... <sighs> I don't want to get into it. It was a year ago in November, and I'm still looking. What? You have to fight your own way, which I've done my whole life. Don't get me wrong, in this economy, uh, I'm lucky to have any job at all, but I wish I knew how it felt like to not have to go to work. Like Moondust or 
until we meet again. And then you cheer. Just last Sunday, we sang till we meet again. Believe it or not, I once did a waltz for that too. Went a little like this. <laughs> in a while. Woo! Remember that fire we had down Finch Avenue? Yeah, I was there. The smoke was coming out heavy as hell, but you couldn't see no fire. <sighs> Boy, that was some fire. And I go and say, I could have killed you. 
And then I started shaking, and the gun in my hand started shaking like a bastard, and I said, just get the hell out of here. <laughs> so, I took the fire department test in 98. I got called up in 99. Now, let me tell y'all something. This world messed up. This country messed up. But the firemen, they produce. Get this. You got them putting out fires. You got them saving babies. You got them doing mouth to mouth with the guy that's dying. You cannot get around that. That stuff is real, man. You know, I used to work in a bank. What? Reading papers, counting money. That stuff ain't real. But as a fireman, I could look back and say, hey, I helped put out a fire. I helped save somebody. Someone in this world could be born or they could grow because of me. It shows I did something on this earth. Should have seen her glide. I was terrified. I spent the 
about growing up in the South with my mom and my grandma. But now, I got my own beautiful daughter. And I've got plans for her. So I leave my house every morning to go scrub rooms at the Marriott. And I come up to this office, and it's scrubbing again. And you know what I'd be like? I'd be like, this is a capitalist newspaper. 
And as long as it's a capitalist newspaper, it is not going to serve you. Because its job is to serve its owners. Or I tell them, like, come over and take over the paper or talk to the editor yourself. People responded so well to these suggestions, you guys. Except the editor. He called me into his office and he's all blah, 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 blah. And I just wanted to take a baseball bat and smash his head in. I mean, you guys, he is such a sweet guy. Like, I don't ever get any pleasure from shooting him out with a 50 caliber machine gun and watching his body splatter to pieces. <laughs> or, you guys, I could walk into his office. <laughs> How do you face your death, dude? You see that? That got me thinking. What will I do when I get fired? I mean, I gotta do something to show them I'm better than you, brother truckers, and I'm getting fired because I'm different. But I just, I, I panicked then, and I went into his office and I said, I hope you can live with the conditions you're creating. And he said, I want out of there, and, and you know what? And I, I couldn't, I just couldn't stop crying. And, <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not the one creating these conditions. You are. And you know what I said? I said, I'm not the one with all the power. You are the one with all the power. <laughs> you guys, it's what happened, to be honest. I got me on unemployment now for like a couple of months. You see, for the first couple of weeks, they were so nice to me. Until last week, this lady tells me, me, to get a number. And you know what I said? I said, screw you, you witch. I'm going to wait outside your house, knock you over with a steel pan, and steal all your crap. Screw you. You guys. I am not, not a bitter person. I'm just a pacifist. <laughs>
daddy's made mistakes. You know, this may sound square, but my kid is my imprint, you know. This is why I work. Every time I see a sharp, well-dressed guy walking across the street, I'm looking at my kid. You know what I want? I want to make sure that my kid doesn't turn out like me. I want him to look me in the eyes and say, Dad, you're a real nice guy, but you're a horrible father. Please. You know, I think that's the reason why we went out of the caves. Not just, we didn't go over there, just over the other side, just to, out of pure curiosity, but to make sure we get our kids out of that cave. Otherwise, life isn't worth living. Otherwise... See that 